night, uh, as many of you know, along with other cities across the country, uh, we were without 911 service for a little more than two hours. Uh, and we obviously know how important safety is. It's one of my, just came from a state of city address, really foot stomping the importance of public safety. And so an unplanned disruption to 911, it's, it's obviously never ideal. Uh, but I will say that our preparations and our ability to adapt to what happened uh, last night quickly ensured that our public safety services, they continued to be delivered uh, throughout that outage. And we'll talk a little bit more about that with some of my colleagues here. So I want to thank everyone in the community for your willingness to adapt to that. Uh, I think one of the things that uh, we do well, and we'll talk about this, is our comm strategy for how we message and how we get things out to the public in a rapid fashion. Uh, and so thanks to our dispatchers, law enforcement, uh, you know, I was at home at 9 o'clock um, kind of winding down because I'm like, all right, I got to stay at a city address. I better get a good night's sleep. And my phone just started going berserk. And, um, and I didn't even have to weigh in a lot because our team was just like an orchestra chipping in with this is what we're going to do with comms, here's what we're going to do here. And it was so fun to see those guys in action. So I want to thank them for that work. Uh, really a big thanks to the team at Metro uh, who just pivots on the fly and, uh, and service as usual as a result. You know, those guys, they work 365 days a year. Um, it says 27 hours a day on here on my notes, but I'm pretty sure it's only 24, but it's a lot. It's every day. It's every hour. Uh, and so I want to, I'm going to let um, Mike Gramlich and Regan Smith kind of get in the details of the what and the why and how long behind it, but I really just want to um, spend my time up here just thanking our teams and saying you guys couldn't have run this any better. It was excellent for me to be able to sit at home and armchair quarterbacking this thing and just watching it all happen. And uh, I know that even some of our comps was – copied by um, agencies all over the country and say, what are you doing in Sioux Falls? Can we use that template? Can we use this template? Uh, so good testament to our rapid response for an issue like this. So with that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Sioux Falls Fire Assistant Chief Mike Gramlich, I believe, next. And he's going to give a little bit more detail about what happened last night. Good morning. Metro Communications is Sioux Falls and Minnehaha County's Public Safety Answering Point, or PSAP. Our team of just under 60 individuals responds to 911 calls for service and dispatches first responders across the Sioux Falls area. Last night at 7.59 p.m., a significant downtime, or outage, of our 911 services in the area was confirmed. By 10.38 p.m. last night, services were restored to full capacity. The cause of the outage in our area is unknown, and across the South Dakota and other regions in the United States is also unknown. During the duration of the outage, Metro Communications received 112 calls for service. For reference, typically during the same time period for the day and the week, Metro Communications takes 114 calls. To our knowledge, we have never experienced an outage of this magnitude or duration, and we're fortunate to have a 24-year span of our team currently, so that's a long time to not have experienced something like this. Police, fire, and EMS response to 911 calls was not impacted during last night's outage. Delivery of these essential public safety services continued throughout the outage. In this unprecedented challenge, we pivoted 911 calls to remaining phone lines. Metro Communications staff's expertise and ability to shift calls to our admin line and the availability of 911 texting provided the same dispatch services our first responders receive on any other day. We remain incredibly grateful to our partners in public safety and service across the city, county, and our community for coming together always to ensure continuity of operations. Echoing Mayor Tenhaken, thank you to the community and our partners for cooperating as one last night. Now we will hear from Emergency Manager Regan Smith. Thanks, Mike. Um, uh, just following along, uh, the city issued a wireless emergency alert at 9.02 p.m. last evening, notifying the public of the 911 system outage. Wireless emergency alerts, or WIAs, are short emergency alerts. Authorities can send any WIA-enabled mobile device in a locally targeted area. 
We is a look like a text message, but are designed to get your attention with a unique sound uh, and vibration that is repeated twice. Uh, to ensure you are able to receive these alerts on your mobile device, uh, check with the notification settings to ensure that it's not turned off, and you can also check with your wireless provider to resolve any issues you may have. Metro Communications and the City of Sioux Falls are prepared to respond to an outage like such as last night's. Uh, Metro 911 and all city departments have a continuity of operations plans that identify contingencies for the loss of key infrastructure. While we hope uh, these plans are, are never realized, uh, having these plans in place makes successful responses to incidents like yesterday possible. Uh, thanks for uh, the media for attending today. Uh, we are open for questions. Uh, actually, the service provider, they're looking into the cause, but as you'd imagine, 12, years post, or 12 hours post-incident, we don't have any information there yet. Does this affect 988 at all? Not that I'm aware of. No, okay. they're different systems, yeah. but yeah. I've heard it was multiple states. Is that accurate? Uh, I wouldn't be able to confirm that. I've seen the same reports in the media as you have, but it does appear that there was some other states affected as well, yeah. Okay, there's also... Uh, reports that it was possibly like a line cut. Uh, at this time, Does we don't. that affect multiple states or don't that, know? That's technology beyond my understanding. But uh, again, when there's a, a cause reported, that will be that will come through our vendor and we'll be able to share that as well. And you guys will release when you find out what the cause is, if you find out what the cause is? Uh, I would imagine as a state system, since the 911 state system is, is managed that way, that entire information will come out. Calls that came in last night were those all through the, the like 367 number? I mean, so it'd be a combination of the 367 number and the 911 to text, which stayed uh, alive, yep, store. stayed active throughout the process. And so, phones that can call 911 only, they were still able to text 911 if needed. That's correct, yep. So, the texting is that, is that a different system then? Or? Honestly, I can't explain how that works on the back end. We were just very <laughs> grateful that that continued to work. How many, what like percentage of, of calls do you typically get through texting versus call? I don't have that information offhand. We can follow up with you if you'd like. So overall, you guys think that this went well on your guys' end? Would you guys do it the same if there were an outage in the future? Or would you make any changes to what you did uh, and how it was handled or no? Uh, one of the great things that we do at Public Safety regularly is an after-action review. We'll be having one for this, looking at what went well, what we might be able to improve in the future. Yeah. How, how many folks were working last night at Metro, and, and kind of what? How quickly did you guys notice that this was down and, and get the relief out? And yeah. So we had ten that were on staff, but we were fortunate. We had some other leadership team members that were here for a different meeting, so we were able to literally just walk down the hall, and we were in the center. Um, and help me with your second part again. Uh, I forgot my thought. Um, oh, what, what was sort of the immediate, like, oh. but, uh, was it like a, sta a staffer that noticed it? Or did, yeah. the, did all the systems kind of crash? Like, what did it look like when, when things were down? So one of the great improvements as we came into this new facility uh, as part of the city, we implemented a real-time analytics program that was instrumental in helping us identify quite early, uh, long before we received any coordinated messaging or notifications from anywhere else. Any other questions? Happy to take them.